This is Pan African Radio 96.1 FM. Greetings, Pupati. How you doing? Definitely. Uh, so right about now, you are live uh, on Pan African Radio 96.1 FM right here in Zambia. Uh, people have been following your music, and I would say big ups uh, to the music that has been submitted so far. All right. So to kickstart. To, to, to kickstart uh, the the interview with, let, let, let's get to have our people understand who really exactly Pupati is, uh, where you're hailing from, and of course what your music is all about. All right, pretty amazing. Now, um, re- reggae dancehall, uh, th- th- that's pretty deep. And of course, uh, it- it's a kind of gen of music that many people, you know, have... Um, have, have you know uh, highlighted it to maybe, or maybe they've put through their hallucination to say if you're a reggae artist then you must be somebody that's controversial you must be somebody obviously that keeps dreadlocks and that smokes uh, how do you look at it Okay, now uh, l- l- let's get to profile you a little bit more before we get into uh, the whole music thing and obviously uh, get to share with you uh, what, what song Zambian fans uh, are currently enjoying from you. So, you are a sound engineer. Um, uh, what's the difference, uh, you know, sound engineering and music? Is it not one and the same thing, like maybe production? Yes, it's actually a different section of music creation because we have a lot of artists with us who don't know anything about sound engineering. A lot of, a lot of artists who don't even know anything about writing. They write for the people who produce this and they don't do sound engineering. So all the sections are different. All right, pretty amazing. Now, quickly, uh, moving on, like si- sound engineering, was it something that uh, you wanted to do? And then uh, obviously maybe get to mix it up with music or you know something else and then hey circumstances have to come in and you gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah, actually when I started making music, I, I didn't do anything for sound engineering at first. I, I used to give people my jobs, my songs to mix for me. And at some point I decided that wow, well I don't like it because a lot of times when people mix for me, I don't get to like the end point, the results. Yeah. 
All right, so uh, after getting uh, your, your your education in sound engineering, are you now producing the music, your music, uh, for yourself? Okay. All right. So now, uh, this time around, when uh, you mention Nigerian artist or Nigerian music, obviously many of the people they link it, you know, to the Afrofusion, Afro type of music because Nigeria is known for that. Uh, why didn't you go for that? Why did you choose uh, reggae dance? Yeah, I think reggae chose me because I, I remember properly as a kid, I was a reggae artist. I think I started music as a singer and a rapper. And those days when my mentor, I have a mentor then, when he plays me reggae music, I don't think I have any music. I don't think I, I like the sound of reggae music. But, you know, at some point, it caught me so much that I had no choice. I just saw myself to make me the fool of reggae, reggae sound. I started loving it. And uh, at some point, I started writing reggae songs. And at some, at some point in my life, I got an opportunity. And it was not a comfort opportunity, it was a reggae opportunity. So I had to take it up. And I took it up, and oh, everybody loves it. And I decided, and I, and I, you know, I went back into the corner of my room, the greatest corner, and I was like, I mean, this could be actually an edge for me if I can be able to fuse my Afro beats mm-hmm. and my reggae. It's going to definitely start to stand out of the crowd. Mm-hmm. I, I decided to start working on my, on my, on my reggae, mm-hmm. get like dope on it, and then my Afro beats is already since my blood. Afro beats is my blood. So I decided to work harder on my reggae, and like, I can actually tell you that in Nigeria, there are a few people who have the type of reggae that I do. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's 100 percent so I really need some edge for me. I fuse my reggae and not for me in a seamless way that you wouldn't even know. You wouldn't even know. You, you probably, you, you know this is, this is the same thing, the same thing. Uh-huh. I'm singing with different voices, but the same song, wow. which is an edge for me. And I think I've got a lot of reception from, from people, uh, fans, and, and a lot of turnouts all over around the world, you know, so... Uh, I think I'm on the right road. All right. So after saying this, uh, like, w- what sets you apart, uh, you know, from these other artists, or let's say from uh, the reggae that's uh, the the reggae type which is there in Nigeria? What sets you apart? What sets me apart is my lyrical delivery. Um, my music. Mm. That, that when you hear the delivery, you know that this person. Yeah. It's not playing, it's not joking. Yeah. You know, like I said, I said I have the half from half from it in me. But the dance things is a skill that I acquire through hard work mm-hmm. and through a lot of research. And now I can tell you that Afro is me, reggae is me. So this stands me out of all other artists in the country and the country that they give me the edges. And it's a sound that people are not really yet used to. But mm-hmm. well, now uh, people are getting used to Afro beats and reggae dancer. It's actually the new, the new stuff in town right now. Not just Afro beat, not just reggae. But the fusion of the two is music. Trust me. So this is an edge that so sets me apart from every other artist out there. Mm. All right, uh, pretty amazing. And of course, our dear uh, listeners, you are listening to Africa in the Sun on Pan African Radio Net 6.1 FM. And of course, uh, my studio guest uh, this evening is Pupa T, all the way from Nigeria. Of course, talking about his music and getting to at least uh, know him a little bit better apart from the music that uh, you just hear. Now, uh, b- b- back to you, uh, Pupa T. Uh, how do you come up? How do you come up with uh, the lyrical content, and w- w- what is really in the lyrical content? Is it, uh, you know, something that uh, can educate somebody? Is it music that somebody can learn one or two things out of? 
Yeah. Actually, most first of all, uh, I used to tell or, uh, a lot of my colleagues who are asked that are looking up to me, I tell them, I said, every feature listen to has a story. It's saying it's telling you a story. So all you got to do is get the story this thing is telling you and then join the story and project the story with the piece. So it depends on the piece I'm actually handling that determines the kind of stuff I do. But basically, um, I, I, would, I would say that I'm, I'm more on the positive side. A song that you can play everywhere mm. with the little ones can listen to, the mature people can listen to, and the, 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 the young ones, the youth can listen to. Because I don't really, I don't use vulgar, vulgar words in my, in my, in my songs. Mm. You hardly hear me singing things that are normal, you know, going to the society. Because these days we have a lot of people making music, but they're actually destroying our society with their lyrical content. Yeah. You know, when, when you're talking of the people who did reggae, like Rob Marley, uh, you know, they actually preached the gospel of reggae positively. It wasn't preached the other way. The other way. So these are the people I'm following. You know, and if you check most of my songs online, you see a lot of them are, 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 are inspiration, are songs you listen to, and they want you want to, you know, want you want to get something on, you know. Mm. You know, that's that's the kind of music I do. So yeah. Well, all right. So, uh, obviously, uh, coming to another issue or coming to another thing, uh, still with the lyrical content and uh, doing all that kind of stuff. Like, um, artists are regarded as um, they, they are regarded as um, role models, uh, you know, for young ones and for everybody that listens to the music. Because music has to be about a positive change and. Pre- in a certain narrative uh, how, how do you think you have impacted uh, the young people with your music especially those that follow your music closely uh, thank you very much this is actually one of the most important parts of my career and my journey so far i think if you're doing something and it's not reaching out to people you're stuck but i you know something has kept me going on all this while because i realized that i've been Taking up music, people who I don't even know, mm. they get to reach out to me and tell me, Bro, you blessed my life with this kind of song. God bless you, just keep it on. Wow. So I think from the comments that I've had from my fans all over the globe, I mean, from the UK, from the USA, from Canada, people I don't know, people I've never met before, mm. the message is the same within me because I make myself open to my fans, I like to engage with my fans. So, um, you know, I'm open to them. So I used to get a lot of comments from people like, this song is inspirational, this song is lovely, and I thank you, this song has actually changed my mindset. And that is all I need to hear. So this is actually keeping me to, you know, keep up with my message. You know, actually these days, people don't really want to hear the message, just want to dance, just want to buy, and you know, but to be honest, we need to keep making the message known to them. They need to hear more positive into their kids. Mm. Do you understand? Because these are things that would change their society. It's actually start from music. Music is powerful. You can change their whole nation. So that's why we have to be very careful about the things that we think. Okay, let me give you an example. I personally in my life. When I think about things, mm. it happens to me at the end of the day. Okay. You know, I've, so, I've, sung about, I've sung about victories, I've sung about problems, and I've, you know, I just I just find that anytime I think about something, maybe I think about a love song, maybe I, I think about a, a bit of somebody that I fall in love with and I'm thinking. And in the next few months, I'll be falling in love. So I think music is actually powerful. Yes, it's something I've experimented with my life personally. And I, that's why I take time to know the kind of message I put out there. So okay, c- can you say that somehow uh, you 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 know exactly what your fans need at a certain time as you are making this music and you make it for them? Oh, most definitely, most definitely. A lot of times I like to relate to my fans what they are facing at the moment because I know life is not easy for a lot of people, and because I also come from the angle uh, of, of, of 
I, I speak out if I'm feeling, and I feel like a lot of people are feeling what I'm feeling. So, and I'm telling them to, you know, uh, to raise up their chest, pick up their chest, and you know, be, 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 be unafraid, you know, unafraid of anything. So, because I've been there, when I sing. All right, pretty interesting. Uh, quickly, uh, I, I will be mixing things, but quickly, let me get to uh, the, the, the music, like the song that uh, I, I think has enjoyed massive airplay uh, right here on Pan African Radio. Uh, it, it's a song titled I Got Everything, it, it's actually playing in the background. Uh, um, uh, 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 l- let's talk about this project. Uh, what was going through your mind, you know, when you were doing this project? Yeah, I think I was in South Africa then when I had the inspiration of the song. I was, I was, I was with my manager in the house that day, mm-hmm. and I think I made a freestyle. Um, we did a freestyle from the intro, so the producer of the beat linked up with me, said, "Look what I did on that beat," and he said, "Make a beat for me." So he sent me the beat that was the uh, I got love got everything beat, mm-hmm. and the next thing that came to my head. Like I'm just gonna talk about the things that I have, the blessings that I've that I've heard so far in life. Yeah. Yeah. So and it just came and it was actually just a freestyle. We we were set a video and we're writing and we're freestyling to the song and that's how it came. And you know, I go back to Nigeria. When I go back to Nigeria I decided to record it. Mm-hmm. I recorded it. I mixed it. And I put it out, and I, I, you know, it was awesome. The, the kind of rece- the reception I have from my fans, they were like, "Wow, this is a song, this is a jam." Yeah, it's a positive. Like, like I said, it's one of my positive songs. One of the songs that I put out there that I've put yeah. a lot of people's mindset, a lot of people's mind towards life. You know, sometimes you can be in trouble. Mm-hmm. You just need to look around yourself and count your blessings. That's all you need to do. You want to make yourself. So that's the kind of song. Mm, m- uh, moving on from uh, I-, I got everything I, I-, I wouldn't uh, uh, you know uh, say that I've played all the music that I have for you on radio I think I've only played uh, two or three because somehow somewhere they also spoke to me and I was like okay I think I'm comfortable pushing this and uh, getting the message out there so um, m- most of the times uh, I-, 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 I will come to this again most of the times there's is a miscommunication <laughs> you know you said you in your music in your lyrics uh, there's no vulgar language and mostly dancer musicians reggae musicians especially dancer uh, musicians th- there's always you know that vulgar language in the music and all the boasting and everything why don't you talk about that at least at some point an artist has to brag over things they don't have you know <laughs> I, I, I know a lot of people say that you fake it till you make it, but to be honest, if I want to be original, mm-hmm. I have to understand what I have been through. I have to understand what I have experienced, what I have encountered. You see, the things I have encountered in life are the source of, source of inspiration for me. Mm-hmm. So if I have not encountered something, if I have not, you know, do all this lifestyle, I don't think I'll be to be original or be to the same in that kind of lifestyle. Even people will use Say, oh, this guy's just one So I like to think of what I'm doing. If I'm, if I'm in pain, mm. I like to think about that pain. And I like to think about how to come about the pain. If I'm, in, if, I, if, I, if, I'm, if I'm broke, mm. I like to think about being broke. Think about how to get over it. That thing. So I, I, I'm not a type of person that, that thinks fakeness to the world. Because everybody believes that every artist out there is their reach. Everybody's happy. But we all have our own darkness. Mm. So and these are the things that we can, you know, relate through music to people. I don't think I can be part of those artists that are using the vulgar words and uh, bragging. Uh, I'm not using my music to brag. I'm using my music to change so to change mind, to motivate people. You know, that's what my music is all about. Speaking about change and speaking about uh, positivity uh, in the lyrical content of a good song. Many are times that w- when we hear reggae music, 
reggae musicians are counted as revolutionists or people that uh, that that are politicians in a hidden state and always complaining about uh, you know the state of affairs in the country. Are you one of those? I am. Yes, I am. In fact, there are people who are following their steps. Because I have a lot of reggae songs that if you hear them, you, you feel it in your soul. And trust me, your mind will never be able to move away from that reggae because it's talking about reality. It's talking about soul. Mm. So I think I'm following the head. That's why I'm doing my music this week. Like there's a song I, I sang about time. Mm. Time. I spent time. It's like an ecstasy. ecstasy I sang it in a reggae reading and it was also. There was a time I talked about art. Art broken. I, I, I talk about how to go in a different amount of way. Even though when I think about love, I think about love in a mature way. I don't think about love like the teenagers who are just sleeping around and saying different things. But yeah, yeah, I think about love in a mature way. That's how it's supposed to be done. You know? Mm-hmm. So I think I'm, I'm one of the revolutionaries. Are you your music's number one fan? Most definitely. If I, if I, when, I'm, when, I'm, when I'm listening to music, I, I, I get to listen to a lot of my music more than I listen to every other person's talk. <laughs> because I learn from my music, actually. I learn a lot of things more from my music. You see, a lot of times, people practice it. I mean, they preach, and they don't practice it. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. I go back to my song, and I listen to them, and they also bless me. So I think I'm my number one fan. And it keeps the me. Do you feel that uh, you know you you've been appreciated for for the work that you are doing? Because like uh, you said, and like uh, I would not many a times that uh, this time around people do not listen to the lyrical uh, content. They just want to dance to the beat. They want to vibe to to the tune, to the tune and everything. Uh, can you say that you are proud with uh, this type of music that you are doing, and you feel that there is certain a number of people that do not only listen to uh, the tune or the melody of your music but they pay attention to the lyrical content yeah absolutely absolutely you see it's like when our Lord Jesus Christ came into the world not everybody believed it mm-hmm. or in, in the only few people that actually believed in him they changed the world after he left and that is the just that I'm just using as an example you see if I have only two well my music is touching their lives and changing their lives. Mm. I think I'm satisfied. Okay. <laughs> I think I'm satisfied. If it's just only two people, it will have to more than one because I have thousands of fans around the globe, not of the millions, and always to keep pushing. And I figured out that when, like when I go to a show, when everybody's performing, when it gets to my turn, mm-hmm. people listen. People calm down and then listen because my song is clear, the lyrics is clear, it's simple, and then man can be able to understand it. So even if you're doing something like catches you and make you pay attention, they only clap for me when I'm leaving the stage. So okay. because I'm a preacher, I'm not like I'm, yeah, I'm actually an entertainer at the same time. Yeah. Well, I'm entertaining you, and at the same time, I'm blessing your life. That's what I do. This is pretty amazing, and of course, uh, let, 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 let's get to uh, one point that I've heard uh, many of my country's uh, musicians, Zambian musicians, talking about uh, how they do not get support, uh, you know, from the fans or from the government. How is the entertainment industry there in Nigeria? It, does the central government support art? To be honest, man, I, I, would, I would say that the, our music industry has nothing to do with the government. We've actually we've grown out of uh, 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 the government's umbrella. We do things now ourselves. Okay. Music is, is an ambiguous thing, it's a global thing. Mm-hmm. You, you can make money in collaboration with anybody in the whole world with your music. So the government has nothing to do with it because they, they never supported us. In fact, I would say that music is the thing, is one of the major things that is making Nigeria relevant to the whole world right now. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So we, we, we have to, we've actually been able to, you know, fight 
no are with devil and conquer. And that is why it is. And because we have a, we are very, we have a high population in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So we have high population of artists. And they are not just artists, we have a high population of good artists. Artists who know how to sing. Mm -hmm. Artists who know how to, you know, entertain people. But because the governments are not really supporting, it gets hard for them to come out. Because yeah. these days, if you don't have millions of naira, nobody's gonna be able to hear your song. Mm -hmm. If I'm gonna drop a song, I spend millions on this song to campaign, to advertise my song. Yeah. So if you don't have those kind of investors, mm -hmm. your, your music is not going on anyway. No matter how beautiful, no matter how beautiful the music is. This, that's the only, that's the only back, backslide that we have in our music here. So a lot of times we hear bad music getting more public, public, uh, well, more public uh, relations, more, more, more public uh, awareness. Mm -hmm. Bad music, but the good ones, Maybe because uh, the, probably the most talented artists are not the rich ones. Yeah. And the rich ones are the ones that are not talented and they feel like they can actually buy this, the, 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 the space mm -hmm. and then take over. So that is actually the only fact like you know, that we have in the music industry. Now, besides this, I think we competition makes us one of the best in the world. We love competitions. Like I myself, I love competitions. It, it motivates me, it sharpens me. You get me? Yeah. And that is what it is all about in Nigeria. There are a lot of good things. There are a lot of good arts. When you really hear them, it makes you better. You get me? Yeah. So, and I'm saying that there are a lot of bad ones that we hear. But that doesn't mean we're gonna stop. Exactly. But if you really wanna get good music, trust me, come to Nigeria and get a lot of good music. Mm. So th there's a perception that that goes round to say um, b b uh, that that there's a legislature or a legislative that. Uh, government, the Nigerian government had signed to say local channels or local stations have to play 90% of um, Nigerian music and then 10% they can play other music. Uh, that's the perception which is there. Yes, there was there was this uh, there was this uh, there was this uh, uh, evolution of the music industry in Nigeria at some point in time. Well, I think when they when they when they give that legislation. They, they, they never mandate. It wasn't a mandatory thing. No, okay. It wasn't a mandatory thing. Yeah. So I think what happened was that we fought for ourselves. Because I can remember back in 1999, if you go to a party, the the the, the songs you're gonna be hearing, you're gonna hear 70 percent of foreign songs and only 10 percent of Nigerian songs. And when you hear the Nigerian songs, it's not it's as whack as. You know, you cannot compare with the international songs. Yeah. We have worked hard mm -hmm. over decades. And now, even the, even the people, even the white people, the people abroad, they are listening to our songs. It's actually hard work. Exactly. I would say it's actually, it, it was a government legislation. No, it wasn't that. Because we still have a lot of radio stations who actually play international music. But to be honest, you, 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 you can't, you can't, you can't play international music when you're artist, when you're old. Inside art, I'm speaking the best of sounds. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's what happened here. And we decided, to, you know, to lift up our culture, our Afrobeat, give it out to the world. And, and you know, we're, we're, we're refined the whole thing. It was refined. It was refined and big up to the people like Whiskey, big up to the people like Bonaboy, big up to Baba Fela himself, who was the original talk of Afrobeat. You know? Yeah. So, I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't really about the government's legislation or anything. Without the government, the music industry is untouchable. <laughs> untouchable. I'm telling you the truth. Okay. The music, the music industry in Nigeria is untouchable. Okay, the government, the government is not supporting uh, facts on top of music. Mm. All right. Now, uh, this is a brand new year. Uh, at, at some point, uh, I know that uh, at some point, let's say in years like 2019, 2020, uh, you were inconvenienced the entertainment industry because of a global pandemic, uh, the coronavirus. 
This is the year 2023 and uh, obviously COVID is uh, not there anymore or there's only little reports of it. What are your big plans for 2023? And um, I just want to touch on this because I, I see people go, you know, when I when I check my data inside and see people when they speak to my songs, mm-hmm. I, I see people from countries that I've never been and I'd love to go there and see these people, you know, upload them to watch like, so a lot of songs are going to be having a lot of shows and, and I just, you know, dropped a song this year, my first single was dropped in February uh, this year. The 8th of January this year, and it's still doing great on, 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 all, on all platforms right now. So, we're gonna drop more um, actually. We plan to drop an EP this year, okay? We were supposed to drop an EP last year, but due to uh, a lot of traveling and stuff, I decided to push it to this year. So, this year. A big, a big EP is coming out. Pretty interesting. Now, th- there's uh, a Zambian artist, obviously, upcoming artist or imagine artist that is listening to this interview. And, uh, you know, th- th- they want to get some wisdom and some sense from you. W- what would be your word of advice? Because it seems all dark. There's no light at the end of the tunnel. Most definitely. Yeah, I think what, 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 only, what only matters is about you. You should know what you're doing. Mm-hmm. I always tell people, know what you're doing. Don't, don't lie to yourself, be truthful to yourself. Because, you know, I remember when I started the music and I, I got someone I didn't believe in myself. And it was dragging me back. Until I started believing in myself, that was when I realized I was doing the right thing. If you're doing something and you don't believe in yourself, then you're doubting yourself. Mm-hmm. Then you're dragging yourself back. So all you need to do is believe, hard work, and prayer. First of all, the prayer is not going to make you make mistakes or choosing the best career for yourself. That's what prayer does. Besides prayer, when you now get what you have to do, then you keep with the hard work deliberately, consistently. You understand? That is how it works. And um, that is how I have a growing personality. And I think that if anybody can apply this to their own career, it's going to be an edge for them. So that's the advice I have for you. Prayer, hard work. All right, so you said you interact with uh, lovers of your music uh, a, a lot or quite a number of times. Uh, you, you can kindly, uh, you know, give out your socials. Uh, you, you, you may gain some new fans and obviously who don't want to come and bother you. Like, hey, Puppeti, uh, how is it here in there? <laughs> so I mean I'm everywhere I'm actually everywhere I I, I have a manager who I told my manager he has any new uh, uh, interaction with my friends that I've never spoken with before they always direct to me but I'd like to hear from my friends wow that's pretty interesting and uh of course your music is it available on all digital sites uh, can people download and stream Thank you so much, brother man. Looking forward to you visiting Zambia for a show so that at least we can have a one on one in the studio. <laughs> Definitely. Thank you so much, brother man. Big ups, and of course, uh, wishing you all the best. Thank you very much.
Big absent. Big absent. Of course, uh, that's my guest for this particular evening. Pupati, all the way from Nigeria. Of course, uh, making appearance right here on Africa in the Sun. I got peace, I got everything I got money, I got friends I got cheeks, I got everything I don't trip, me run things Me don't fret, loving everything I got joy in my soul Cause I don't beg, I don't borrow I got love, I got life I got peace, I got everything I got money, I got friends I got cheeks, I got everything. I don't trip, me run things, me don't fret, loving everything. I got joy in my soul, cause I don't beg, I don't borrow. Mm -hmm. No, me not borrow for you, yeah. No, me not borrow for yam. No, me not borrow for char. No, no, me not borrow for you, so. No, me not borrow for me, no. No, me not borrow for leave, no Cause I don't beg, I don't borrow yeah. <laughs>